Daniel, stage is yours. Thank you so much, Lucas. Hello, everybody, and then good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you are. So my name is Daniel, and uh, once again, welcome to join my the hands-on workshop around the enter subalice functions journey with the Quarkus. So let's move on to a uh, quick uh, introduction about me. So name is Daniel Rowe. Once again, I'm a technical marketing major as well as developer advocate at Red Hat, specialized cloud never runtime, of course, Quarkus and Spring and Node.js, and a lot of runtime to develop your business application. And I also spent uh, a lot of time to integrate uh, cloud capabilities such as Subless and Service Mesh with some practice rather than just uh, product-based features. Out of Red Hat, I'm also responsible for CNCF Ambassador and DevOps Institute Ambassador uh, to evangelize a lot of DevOps engineers and SRE and even developers how to build a cloud every application and architecture and a platform whole portfolios. So here's a bunch of my uh, contact information and uh, my recent uh, published in my book, like uh, Ansible for Automation, and also there are uh, ebook, you can download it for free. And then you can follow my Twitter, and the most important thing is you can subs subscribe to my YouTube channel, Bitly URL Daniel TV. There are a bunch of the tutorial and practical demos and even non-technical tips for developing and cloud every application. You can also uh, you can also uh, clone my old example demo on my uh, GitHub repository like Daniel 030. Okay, let's move on. So this is super important thing at the very beginning. So there are Bitly URL, uh, Quarkus dash uh, less dash labs. Uh, uh, if Lucas could copy and paste on the chat, it'll be helpful for all attendees. And just once again, being you are at Quark Station Subless Dash Labs, this is a whole bunch of tutorial we're gonna go through uh, next uh, 55 minutes. And then you can actually scan the QR code and it brings up the discipline URL. Uh, and then here's two things uh, you can uh, do, you, you, you better to do. Uh, while I'm keep speaking, just a pre uh, presentation. The two things, hopefully, uh, some of the some of them you already signed up for free developer sandbox by Red Hat. So we're gonna deploy serverless function to this Kubernetes cluster, as well as we're gonna deploy the same serverless function to Amazon Lambda. Uh, you can sign up for free, uh, even though you need to uh, input your CC import credit card, but. Trust me, it will be. It won't be charged by Red, uh, Amazon when you deploy the simple serverless function because you're gonna delete it uh, based on uh, developer uh, subscription. Okay, let's move on. So I'm gonna quick intro uh, what Quarkus is and why we why we needed to consider to use the Quarkus Java framework to develop cloud native application. So Java designed for a lot like a like a 26 years or 27 years ago. So at a time, Java pretty uh, awesome to design for high throughput. Uh, even though there are uh, many uh, expense, uh, budget, and cost and time, because of the Java design for running uh, the long process, and it doesn't matter how needed to you spend time to start up, and then it pretty awesome. Uh, with the dynamic behavior, because once you have a dyna uh, uh, dynamic, uh, like a byte code, like a job file and a walk file, and then you can run any app server over internet. But you just need to a few app server at a time. But now we move forward to immutable infrastructure to run cloud every application, like a microservices architecture, which means your application uh, immutable and portable and informal. It's not built in the Java application. So that's why a lot of people say, oh, Java frame is a pretty heavy way. It's a pretty slow to run your Microsoft application on cloud, or even Kubernetes with the Linux container technology. More worse thing is uh, serverless function. A lot of people doesn't take the Java but they really more prefer to use Node.js, Golang, or Python. 
rather than Java. That's true until Quarkus was born. So Quarkus, we can say supertonic subatomic Java framework is a pretty awesome uh, architecture and design pattern to minimize the runtime dependency. And then we delete all that code. And also uh, you can have uh, two choices as a developer to packaging the JBM, uh, like a jar application, like a fast jar. And also you can have a native executable file like a Golang, Python. And more important thing is you have a same capability like a, a JavaScript. Whenever you change the code, you don't need to rebuild, recompile, and re-access that, re-restart your runtime. It'll automatically uh, apply for your runtime whenever your code changes, which is really awesome for developers. So here is the build and deploy and run your Microsoft Java application or a monolith Java application for workers. You're going to the packaging application with your prepared uh, package tool like a Maven Gradle. And then once you build your bytecode and then run your app server and then in the behind the scene, there are a bunch of stuff is undergoing. As an example, uh, the, the JBM needs to load your configuration file and enable disable and scanning uh, your classes and a descriptor, a lot of stuff uh, uh, under uh, processing underneath and the, at the last step the JVM just actually run your application as thread or pull. So how make the change to Quarkus? As you can see we're going to ship the old kind of stuff from right to left because the the old kind of stuff you actually don't need it as a runtime. So as you can see the build time you're going to do the average uh, kind of stuff that's why Quarkus is pretty fast to run your application at the start of time. And another good stuff is Quarkus provides native comparison. If you are familiar with it, uh, native comparison, like a GraalVM, and then Quarkus already support these features a couple of years ago. So at the very beginning, Quarkus was born in the 20, uh, uh, almost two and almost three years ago. So here we go. So you can have two choices to run your, uh, Java application based on uh, JDK hotspot, like running on JVM. Also, you can have an every comparison based on ahead of time comparison strategy. So you don't need to JVM any longer to run executable file. We're gonna do that uh, in the uh, workshop environment. So here is the some kind of a resource density perspective of how Quarkus make the change. Quarkus already designed for uh, container strategy. As you can see, traditional cloud native Java stack like a Spring Boot, you have like a, let's say the four application, one same uh, Kubernetes worker node. And then if you look, you can only for the Java application or limited worker, and then you maybe add twice application with a Node.js. This is a, a one of the reasons why people really would love to use Node.js, specifically Amazon Lambda, because the the, the function on Lambda is all kind of your money. When you have a heavyweight application, it, you spend more money to run on top of that. That's why uh, Node.js even Go pretty much popular than Java. But let, let's take a look at the third boss with the, so many uh, Quarks application based in this native compilation. It's almost same Go Lang. So which is pretty awesome. So you don't need to abandon your Java skill at this moment. And then you just uh, uh, adopt Quarkus Java framework to build traditional Microsoft application, but also serverless function as well, specifically on top of Kubernetes platform. And the Red Hat invented Quarkus and also support native comparison stuff based on Mandro. Mandro is a downstream project of a GraalVM. It's not just downstream, but also it's added more capabilities such as Open JDK 11, and it's gonna be uh, keep evolving, and we're gonna have a plan to support uh, JDK uh, Java 17. And also there uh, we have a uh, security uh, checking and uh, improved and security problem like a uh, CBE stuff. And also we edited uh, debugging capability based on the cryo 
uh, cryo uh, is uh, also known as previously uh, uh, container uh, JFR. So here's a, a fun fact here. It's a quark is a funky. I love this name actually. So quark is a funky uh, allows developer to build portable Java API uh, to uh, create the Java, Java functions. You can once create this quark as a funky, uh, you just need one funk annotation on your method, and then it uh, makes your method as a serverless function across multiple application. You can also have uh, multiple reactive application, like uh, using small line mutiny project. So turns out you can have imperative application and reactive application with a fun annotation. It makes your application as a serverless function. You can also have a CDI, like a context pandas injection or a spring DI injection capability, just like you can see. And here's a more funky annotation. We're gonna do that. We have a, a lot of time. We don't have a lot of time today. So we're gonna really more focus on Amazon Lambda, which is a, one of the most popular serverless platforms. And then we're gonna deploy the same application to Kubernetes with the KNet, one of the uh, popular uh, Kubernetes based serverless uh, function capabilities. So, so that, but you can also deploy the same Quarkus application to Google function and Azure function. And you can have a standalone as well. And then specifically KNet thing, so Quarkus automatically generate KNable manifesto as, as you see, uh, to the few uh, just line up with some quick YAML file. And the here is the Quarkus Kubernetes deployment to target. You can specify OpenShift, the enterprise Kubernetes by Red Hat, also Kubernetes, also KNAB. So what kind of deployment target you mentioned, it will be automatically created specific YAML file based on Kubernetes manifesto, which is really awesome. So with the Quarkus, you can now uh, create a serverless function and deploy it with a multiple serverless platform, just two steps. One is create a code and the second step packaging, which allows deploy to a remote serverless platform automatically. It's pretty awesome. It, in the end, this capability reduces your application development, specifically serverless functions for developers. Okay. So I'm gonna quick summarize today's session before we move on to uh, hands-on session. So once again, I already make a quick video uh, around this serverless function, not just uh, Amazon Lambda and Azure function and a lot of stuff here. So just uh, subscribe my YouTube channel, bin the URL slash Daniel OTV. And then uh, here's one more thing. You can find not just Quarkus in there, like Spring Boot and Hamchart, and Ansible and a lot of stuff you can find that. And recently I created a series of Kubernetes stuff. So if you're not familiar with the Kubernetes or a beginner, there are step-by-step -step, uh, how to run the Kubernetes by Lumbai example. Okay, so here's a few more resources. If you're wondering uh, what kind of performance metrics between Quarkus versus another uh, Java framework, like as an example, Spring Boot. Here is a free download by IDC report. Uh, the Quarkus lab validation. You can find the all kind of performance metrics like uh, uh, the throughput and the startup time, response time, heat memory consumption. A lot of stuff you can find there. And another interactive Quarkus self running portal. Bin you want to try this Quarkus and then. I already upload this slide where as a PDF format, our this session page. So please uh, download that thing and uh, just refer this all kind of beneath URL. Okay, so I recently also uh, published a uh, reference card and D-Zone, how to get started somewhere as a function. It's a pretty similar uh, to the workshop, but it's more, uh, it's try to explain uh, what kind of reference run you got a uh, that section. Okay, so time to hands on. Let's move on. Okay, so first thing, I'm going to go back to our first stop. So, Bindi URL Quarkus Serverless Lab. Once you go to there, and then here is the, uh, the Bindi URL. It brings to here GitHub repository. 
And then you can see the uh, enter serverless function journey with the Quarkus. If you have, if you anyone have some kind of difficulty or some issue to access this page or even any technical uh, problem, and please uh, don't hesitate to uh, ask your question in the uh, chat or the Q and A. Also, uh, you can speak up by yourself. Our awesome moderator gives some permission to turn your mic on and speak up by yourself. All right, so two things are pretty quasi. So sign up, uh, developer sandbox. When you click on developer sandbox, so maybe today we don't have much time to go through this workshop, but just briefly keep doing after the session. And then and then this is a sandbox for free for developer once you sign in. Uh, it takes maybe uh, two or three minutes and then you can start out the, uh, our developer sandbox in five minutes. When you click on get start in sandbox, and then you need to log in. And then once you log in, and then you can find here the uh, login, um, launch your developer sandbox after you sign in and then revisit this page. And then once you launch your sign in, and then you can go to automatically uh, with your email address and then go to uh, next version. And then here is my, I'm going to use my internal thing, but you can actually use any uh, email address to sign up. So once we sign up and log in and the launch developer sandbox, this will be our runtime environment as Kubernetes to deploy application. So now start using your sandbox. I actually start my sandbox here. So there are two uh, predefined, pre-created namespace as well as a project based on terminology by OpenShift. Your username dash dev and your username dash stage. We're gonna prefer to username uh, dash dev. I don't believe you don't you have a permission to create a new project, so please choose one of them. And in my in our tutorial, we're gonna use the dash dev namespace today. So there is no uh, resources there because we not we didn't try to deploy any application yet. Okay, so back to the here, and I'm gonna open also Amazon Lambda. So it's for free to like a developer subscription. You can uh, deploy a few serverless function for free. So but so one thing you make sure to uh, input your uh, credit information when you sign up. So I'm gonna log in uh, Amazon Lambda as well. Uh, B two Y. I'm gonna oh try to. Oh, another thing is, let's try to oh, make some easy to and seven a r h. Okay, so I'm in my Amazon Lambda management console, and then you can see. So go to API Gateway, and then just make sure there's nothing. So API Gateway. So there's no API Gateway, and let's try to go to. Uh, what us say, Lambda, here go. And then my uh, Lambda, there's, I didn't deploy any Lambda function at this moment, so you will see uh, there are nothing uh, on my Lambda dashboard. As you can see, there's no display. Okay, so back to the here. So please uh, proceed to sign up. This is a prerequisite actually, so I hopefully you already uh, signed up, but don't worry if you did it, just go for it. Okay, so there are uh, five steps today. So I'm gonna try to uh, go through just to showcase like a live demo, but you don't need to watch my uh, go through the demo stuff. You can go through by yourself to read the context and try to understand uh, what really you need to do each step. So for example, so first step, we're gonna uh, generate the Quarkus Maven project. And then you can use the Quarkus CLI, when you click on that, you can actually download uh, the Quarkus CLI based on your op operating system. So I'm, my operating system is the Mac OS, so it's a pretty easy to using 
uh, the blue utility, or you can use a JPEG. You don't need to use uh, blue thing. Uh, just one single command line is making your app uh, Quark CLI uh, happening. So you can actually do the Maven command like a Maven create some of stuff. When you go to Quarkus.io and then go to like a guide, and then I need to be guide through the first application. And then here we go. So here is how to use the Maven command line uh, to generate applications. So feel free to use uh, whatever, to, what kind of tool you prefer. But today I'm going to use the Quarkus CLI because the Quarkus CLI gives some uh, like a fancy feature uh, to make it easier, make it simpler to create and generate and scale for all project as well as uh, add a lot of stuff. So I'm going to copy uh, this CLI and then let's uh, make a reduce my window. And here's my command line. And there is nothing here. I just copy here. And so it automatically creates a new project just like uh, you can see output looks like uh, uh, it's created uh, some sample application code in the Docker file to package this application and also a lot of Maven wrapper stuff, as you can see. Then you can see the new directory created that. And then this is totally Maven project. You can use any command line uh, just like uh, uh, any ID tools. I'm going to use my ID to uh, VS Code. So, and also the second step, you can run the Quarkus application as uh, Quarkus de de uh, demo. This is one of the beauty of the Quarkus dev UI. Uh, or the Quarkus capability, you give some of the live coding. So I'm going to make it bigger a little bit. Okay. And then let's take a look at that. Uh, what kind of application automatically generated here? So here's just, just hello endpoint and the, uh, just hello rest easy. It's so pretty simple, uh, just like uh, just hello world. Let's go back to terminal window. And then our, here we go. We're gonna, we're gonna to run Quark CLI demo. You can also Maven uh, Quark column dev. So with the same capability to run it. So once you run the Quarkus application, uh, it provides live coding capability for developer, which allows uh, you have change the application and automatically apply for your runtime. I'm gonna show you real quick once our Quarkus application runtime gets started as dev mode. It takes some time when you run at the very first time because you need to download all relevant dependencies from central Git repository. So we're gonna use the raised Quarkus version 2.6.2. Uh, we will uh, release the next version 2.7 uh, in a few days. Okay, so it almost running and then the Quarkus demo to provide a lot of several uh, features, as an example, is dev UI and also continual testing, as you can see. So now we're gonna do Quarkus application, uh, dev UI almost running. And then as you can see, uh, profile dev activated. And then, okay, I'm gonna share. Okay, so dev activated, live coding activated. Okay, pretty cool. And when you click on, uh, press uh, R on my terminal window, it automatically uh, starting continual testing. As you can see, uh, it's a running continual testing. So where that continual testing came from? So here is the my VS code and go to test and then we have the one uh, J unit test here code. So when you go to access to uh, RESTful API, hello, and the return hello REST is just like we implement actual method here. So one test is a success, and then you can actually uh, pull more the control, uh, press H, you can find the more detail, like uh, uh, the toggle logo file, like uh, uh, press J, in the logo table, and a lot of stuff you can find here. And then 
when you click on uh, press D, it allows uh, running all WI. I'm going to make it bigger. You can find here and open the uh, little only view, and you can see, uh, click on test result. It's automatically show your test result here. Pretty awesome. So based on uh, test-driven development strategy, regardless of Microsoft's app, the general Microsoft application, but also serverless function, this is a super important thing for developer to make your application secure and low burnings, and then uh, it's more available all across your environment, staging, pre-product, and product, even local environment. This is super important to keep chasing, uh, implementing your test unit application. But sometimes a lot of people and a lot of developers just skip it. So if Java framework could provide that uh, continuous testing by default, so developer doesn't need to rerun like a Maven Battle file or uh, add a new third party uh, test tool. It's automatically done that here. Okay. So let's try to uh, access the endpoint. You can actually, on the terminal, and the press W, it automatically go to endpoint. Let's try to hello. And you can see hello less easy. And then you can also create to uh, open new terminal. And then let's try to endpoint as our lab instruction. So here is go to HTTP pi. You can actually using call command as well, like this one. So I already installed call the HTTP pi utility, and then you can find uh, hello less easy. Just uh, we have a default, and then let's try to add a new one. But in just above of that, I'm going to add a four more interesting demo here. So when you go to application and let's try to change it uh, like a hello dev comp check it probably I just save the file and then back to endpoint uh, terminal and try to endpoint and just re invoke uh, my restful API and then it automatically changed the result. But in the meantime, I never ever try to rebuild, compile, and packaging, and the deploy and the rerun my application. It automatically happened by Quarkus. And you go to terminal, and then you can find all kind of stuff here. And the one interesting stuff, when you go back to every UI, and then make it bigger, and then <clears throat> test the running. And then it automatically showcase to log. Cancel. Uh, let me try to reload my. Uh, okay. Uh, maybe I'm gonna to change logo level. And then you can find the one test to fail. Be you automatically find that because we just. You can find here test test is a fail because find here I'm gonna make it zoom a little bit. The expect result hello less easy, which is already implement our test unit method. The actual is uh, dev come even though this application functionality works because we uh, access the endpoint here, but we the the functionality is working, but your unit test is broken. So let's try to quick fix that thing. I'm going to just make it low back and save a file. And then it automatically rerun. As you can see, automatically rerun. And the old tests are passing. And I go to back. And then find test is running. And then you will showcase a new test result with the green color. Okay, just like we saw, here we go. Okay, so pretty awesome. So let's move on to uh, next. I'm going to close this one and I'll make it size again. 
and go back to our lab. So in order to deploy our Quarkus function, so we needed to add uh, multiple extensions. So first of all, we're going to deploy this serverless function to Amazon Lambda. So to do that, you can actually change your, your uh, Palm XML. Also, you can have uh, do that the BS code when you go to here and then add extension and then in the example AWS you can find Amazon Lambda. So I'm going to just follow my lab instruction, go back to terminal and then paste the uh, extension at the Quarkus Amazon Lambda HTTP and then you can find the extension edited. When you go to your VS code and then Palm XML, you can find the automatically dependence edited and the relevant uh, library already pulled down on your local file system. So you can actually find the more uh, installable Amazon uh, related dependency. There are a lot of Amazon related dependency like Lambda and also a lot of uh, S3 and SSM, also IAM and you know, RDS, a lot of stuff you can actually use Amazon Lambda uh, uh, services to integrate your Quarkus application. So let's try to change my application. Go back to service. So first of all, we're gonna just create a new services here to CDI injection. We already, uh, I already mentioned on my uh, slide where. So new create a file, like a service file and then copy this application. The method, as you can see, it's just application scope and then one Java method greeting and then just uh, get parameter like a name and then pass down the parameter with this, here is a static con, uh, text to enter serverless functions with the Quarkus with your name. And then go back to uh, our, the resource file. And then let's try to just take a look at that a little bit longer. So here is a pass your specify your endpoint RESTful API. And let's try to change that. And then now you can see the same path, same pass. And then I'm going to add a new one and to change that here. Uh, hello, uh, hello serverless. And then new method here uh, with the greeting endpoint. And then just invoke the CDI injection using inject uh, annotation. If you're familiar with the Spring Boot application, you can find like a same capability, like an annotation or a wire. It's the same thing inject. Okay, so it's a move on and I'm gonna uh, access the endpoint because we still running our Quarkus demo. Here we go. And I'm gonna add, it will return the new text like a hello subless. Now we hello subless. And then I'm gonna try to another endpoint uh, with my name, Daniel, and then enter serverless functions with the Quarkus with Daniel. It's pretty awesome. And then in the meantime, I also didn't recompile and redeploy some of the fiction as well. Oh, I can't find the news. New one. So then I just find the typo. Just feel free if you have any uh, issue or improvement stuff, please uh, feel free to create a PR in this repository. I'm more than happy to address your uh, PR and issues. Okay, so we're gonna uh, ask, change the application as well because the, our adder find here the continual testing uh, perspective. Uh, we got uh, some stuff here. So let's go to ID tool once again and uh, open the test URL and then as you can see, so we need to update our method here. And to serverless, it automatically testing go to uh, endpoint, it will be okay. <clears throat> and now we're gonna stop uh, demo, uh, just uh, control C or command line C. I'm gonna move to end. So I just, uh, just start my demo. Uh, everybody is doing good. If you have any question, uh, just 
uh, put on the chat your question and any any technical issue. I just uh, build this application. Like you can use the Maven Clean package. So we do this uh, uh, param uh, option uh, dash dash no dash test. So I'm gonna skip unit test because we already succeed uh, the unit test during live coding and continue testing capability. So once you packaging application, you got a bunch of the uh, generated file in the target directory. And then uh, just build success and then go to ID2 and then go to target directory, combine a bunch of the uh, function G file and the SAM YAML file. I'm gonna do open SAM YAML file. The Amazon provide a uh, local test tool like a serverless uh, application model, AKA SAM uh, for deploy application JVM or enable comparison as well. It's automatically generated, so you don't need to uh, figure it out how do I use uh, Amazon SDK or uh, Azure, uh, Amazon CLI. You don't need to do that. You don't need to use that because your corpus all take care of you by default. Okay, so back to our tutorial. Here's uh, there's some kind of uh, explanation of what file means here. And then you can actually uh, run locally, uh, use the same application. To do that, you need to run the Docker, uh, Docker like a container runtime. And I'm gonna speed uh, this one uh, to save my time, uh, but you feel free uh, go through the all kind of local in, uh, test before you actually deploy in production Amazon Lambda. So let's try to deploy uh, right away. And then, so one, maybe I just uh, skip it here. Okay, so we're gonna use the uh, Amazon HTTP API. So so there are a few things you're gonna use HTTP uh, RESTful, uh, RESTful HTTP gateway or H, uh, RESTful API uh, to deploy uh, serverless function on Amazon Lambda. But there are the, uh, but today we're gonna use HTTP API. It's a pretty simple and uh, we don't have any complex uh, capability on my serverless function, just it's just it's RESTful API. So to deploy, to do that, just using SAM uh, command line, and I'm going to try to send deploy using target JVM. And then let's try to the stack name the Quarkus function. So we're going to uh, reuse this one. I'm going to uh, try deploy ES uh, region. And then uh, I'm going to, to confirm change it before deploy and then load creation. Yes. In the disable rollback, I'm going to say no. And then is that all okay? And I'm going to key in yes and then save the Computation file, yes, the computation default and same config tom file. Okay. So once I'm gonna do that, uh, maybe I'm gonna a little bit bigger. And then the environment deployable, yes. And then it takes uh, uh, less than one minute. Uh, first of all, it's a create a uh, bunch of the file uploaded to your S3. It's automatically created at the three uh, bucket. Uh, put in the all the application stuff. And then uh, it waiting, uh, create all kind bunch of the uh, Amazon uh, resources here. As you can see, we're gonna create the IAM low uh, to access the Amazon Lambda and actual function and also API gateway. It looks good. I'm gonna press Y, uh, which allows to deploy this serverless function from my local to remote. Amazon Lambda. So let's try to uh, go to Amazon here and then go to API Gateway, first of all. And then you can see the new resource to keep creating. So first of all, AM low just created. So let's try to go to AM, uh, IAM. So identity access manager first. Here we go, IAM. 
any any question i'm going to click on just a quick check q a tab oh there's a no question which is a uh, pretty sure awesome and then we just create all kind of stuff here so i'm going to make it bigger and then we have photos and the one of the roles just uh, create this like a uh, uh, Quarkus function and, and enter serverless row just automatically created based on a uh, same file, same command line. And then let's go to API, uh, which he, uh, allows and user to access our Amazon Lambda function from external, like uh, from my web browser or from your application with the RESTful API. So here's the new Quarkus function API, which you have, this is our URL. Uh, we're gonna copy, I just copy, we're gonna use that. And then let's go to actual uh, RAM, Lambda, uh, if the our Quarkus function actually created at this moment. And then here's our Quarkus function based on Java 11, and then here's your, uh, uh, your the size here, the 13.6 megabyte, all kind of stuff. Okay, so go back to our uh, the here, and you can find the API gateway automatically create an Amazon Lambda thing. So let's try to access endpoint, uh, like a here. So I'm gonna open resizing and terminal. Okay, HTTP, I just copy the endpoint from HTTP API and then so our last pull UI and greeting and AWS plot. And it will showcase the output, like a enter serverless function with a Quarkus, comma, AWS plot, just like that. So now we just deploy a new one. And then you can also deploy a uh, neighbor comparison with this stuff. It takes some time to uh, build your application. I'm gonna skip it today, but just be free to do that. And then once you deploy, and then go back to Amazon thing, and then I'm gonna make it bigger once again, and then go to monitor. And then you can uh, automatically uh, create a uh, cloud watch matrix based on that. It's all kind of capability on your application monitoring uh, based on the Quarkus functions. Okay. It takes some time uh, to uh, gather your metrics. Uh, if you go to terminal and uh, keep uh, invoke the endpoint, and it will shows up. So you uh, you are the uh, invocation and throughput, etc. Uh, let's keep it, it and then go back to our tutorial and I'm gonna quick check my chat room and Q&A. I think uh, no one have a technical issue. Okay. And then when you deploy that comparison, uh, it will, uh, you could first of all, uh, packaging application. Let's try to do that, give it a try. We have a 15 minutes though. So I'm gonna build application. Oh, just one second. I'm using macOS. So in macOS, maybe you needed to, because when you compile native executable file, it depends on uh, your operating system. For example, I'm using macOS to enable executable file only uh, runs on my macOS based on macOS file format. But we're gonna deploy this application to Amazon Lambda, uh, which is uh, running on Linux operation. So Linux operation, so system, we're gonna change the Linux format, but the in order to that on Mac OS, you need to uh, native build based on um, uh, container runtime like a Docker. So to do that, I'm gonna go to my ID tool and then opening application proper file and then just edit the one single application configuration here. Quarkus enable container dash runtime is Docker. And then just try to 
Yo native uh, skip the unit test. It takes a little bit longer than uh, general Maven package because we're gonna there are a few more steps. So first of all, we're gonna package this application as faster like a job file, and then we're gonna uh, make it a native uh, executable file with the, based on the job file. It takes some time. Just imagine that uh, it, the may the the, the build native executable file, you needed to put in the all kind of necessary library and application code and static code as well. So just imagine you containerize the Docker image. <coughs> Excuse me. So the first of all, we're gonna download uh, UBI Quarkus native image to build this application as a uh, native executable file. You know, you're gonna, uh, if you already uh, go through this workshop on top of the, your Linux operating system like a RHEL or Fedora, you don't need to uh, take this step, like uh, you don't need to add this compilation because uh, in Linux operating system, uh, you can uh, packaging native executable based on uh, Linux file format, which is really awesome. But there are still a lot of developers out there try to use Windows and the Mac OS. They should need to run Docker container on your local machine, as well as put in the disk compilation in the application property file. <laughs> okay, so just go back to uh, Word. Uh, in structure, let's try to take a look at that. Uh, what will be next step? Once we're done, uh, native compilation, and then you can find the uh, deploy once again using native.yaml file rather than just JVM. And then we're going to uh, add another new function stack name to differentiate, uh, differentiate between old one and the later one. And access the endpoint, and then finally you can find some of the metrics in the cloud watch. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. So and then once we uh, done deploy this application to Amazon Lambda, and then we're gonna change that using uh, Amazon Lambda with the funky. It makes your application code pretty much simpler. So as you can see, we deleted all kind of stuff and then and just limited the funky annotation here. It's a pretty uh, good for us. And then we're gonna deploy once again. And then Last thing, we have a three application. In the next step, we're gonna deploy the same application to Kubernetes uh, with the funky annotation. We're not gonna change any application code, but you can have actually uh, deploy that application. So we don't have enough time to go through all kind of uh, lab instruction today, but this repository available 24 seven publicly. So feel free to go through the after workshop so I'm gonna to try to uh, make you understand how to go through this whole kind of hands-on experience to develop serverless function based on Quarkus that makes your serverless function a little bit more agnostic uh, function across multiple serverless platform. That is the end of the goal uh, after this workshop. And then hopefully you will have some experience to familiar with the serverless function development with the Quarkus application framework. So it thinks almost done. I'm gonna make it bigger to see the looks. Okay, it's still uh, of maybe on one or two minutes left to finish uh, native comparison. So I don't think I can uh, go through the uh, uh, deploy serverless function to uh, develop a sandbox today. Uh, I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna do best uh, as long as I have more time today. So 
in the meantime, anyone have any question uh, regardless of subless function or quarkus, just ask any stop. I can uh, ask that question uh, based on my uh, background. Okay. So I just check the chat and then QA, QA. Oh, there's no question there. Okay. Is there anyone have some problem to sign up developer sandbox? And then please let me know directly after workshop. Uh, you can uh, ask me by Twitter or you can uh, comment on my YouTube channel until relevant to serverless demo. Okay, I got one question. Can you add maybe add information how to log in uh, to Sam for Sam deploy guide, please? Sure, it's a really good idea. So, uh, okay, uh, really good idea. I, I will uh, add this uh, introduction and guide on my lab uh, tutorial. Uh, thanks for suggestion. I will do that. Thanks, Martin. All right. Okay. It's almost done. It depends on the. It depends on how many Java application logic you include in your serverless function. So just here's a fun fact. You don't need to build native compilation all the time whenever you change the code, whenever you deploy application. So in a more uh, realistic uh, best practice to build native compilation, uh, you might need to add this task on your pipeline like a Jenkins or a Tecton. So you just keep doing uh, developer demo and live coding and they keep changing that. And then you uh, just one time package native executable file using CI CD pipeline, which means you don't need to spend a lot of time uh, on your uh, local environment. Yeah, uh, you are correct, uh, Martin. So w once you deploy three function in Amazon Lambda, uh, Amazon won't be charged anything, right? So and then the end of the lab, uh, you can find how to delete existing uh, the function. So I tried several times and I never ever uh, uh, pay for that. So 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 if you really be worried about that payment, just delete it after you. Uh, come from your function over there. Yeah. So when you use the uh, uh, when you use uh, the same command line to deploy uh, your Java serverless function to Amazon Lambda, so relevant to the S3 permission and uh, the uh, IAM role, the uh, also known as ARN, is automatically created for you. But the intersection to uh, function, you actually create your own uh, any uh, Amazon Lambda role, and then you just map to that role. It automatically uh, mapped to uh, uh, access to your Amazon Lambda function, and then the Quarkus Funk uh, and the Quarkus Funk. Funky uh, application doesn't need to have S3 bucket stuff. All right. Thanks to Rinda uh, to bring that up, uh, to ask any question in the q and tab. Yeah, that'd be awesome. 
And once again, if you have any question or any other issue, just feel free to ask me directly or uh, print the issue in the GIVI part three. Yeah, that's right. So do you have some error uh, when you run the same deploy command? So you can uh, print the error logs, chat or print the issue and I'm more than happy to address after session. We have only four minutes left today. Yeah, this hands-on workshop, uh, it desired to spend uh, at least two hours actually, uh, including understanding of each section. So if you have not familiar with Amazon Lambda or Knative, like a Kubernetes, you might need to understand, click on that uh, each link and then find that, okay, we just done, finally done, and then so let's try to go back to native compilation thing. Okay, here we go. I just copied it. Come on, right? And then we're going to do the Quarkus native function. It's a little bit easy. And then just copy and east. Yes, yes, and no, yes. Yes. Okay. So, it's so a Quarkus Funky. Uh, it's a pretty much uh, convenient to deploy the application, including Amazon Lambda. You don't need to create the HTTP API, which means you, you will save your resource on Amazon, which means uh, you spend less money in the end in a production environment. And then also, a lot of company uh, have some multi-cloud strategy not just a uh, normal application, but also serverless as well. So I just created one business logic application. And then your company asked you, ah, oh, we need to deploy this application in somewhere Amazon Lambda on East time zone. And then this application could be deployed to Kubernetes, uh, one of our data center in EMEA time zone. So in that case, you don't need to add develop or change any business logic. This is one of the awesome thing to do that. Okay, and uh, so it deploy a new application. And then go back to Amazon Lambda thing. And I go to function. It will create a new function. As you can see, here is a native function here. So, and uh, I'm gonna try to, at the last thing, uh, just go to endpoint. Just copy endpoint. So today my MacBook is overflows. So, so maybe it's take a long and go reading and eight of S native prod. And you will, the endpoint, uh, the different endpoint, as you can see here. All right, I'm gonna go back to my slide where, just summarize it today. So you, you've got to learn how to get started in Quarkus uh, serverless function based on uh, our, the Quarkus capability. And then uh, just make sure, go to my uh, YouTube channel, and there are a lot of uh, existing demo, including uh, around this, and John, as well as uh, another lot of stuff like a security and uh, database connection and a lot of stuff, uh, not just serverless, but also uh, general Microsoft application, Binding URL, Daniel TV. Okay, so I'm gonna add the uh, the guide and feel free to uh, suggest any issue and any suggestion, I'm more than happy to address. And thanks again, uh, thanks for joining my session today and then Hope you guys uh, enjoy less of a dev uh, dev conference to check with public. Thanks again and have a good rest of the day.